Hello, horror fans, and welcome back to Horror Drunk. Maybe an electric thing happened. I, I, I... Tonight, we find out what happens if the job seems to be too good to be true. Maybe like a fire thing, or electric. Or... So, if you're ready to laugh and be scared all at the same time, enjoy. Horror fans, we are now going into instructions for the babysitter added to r slash no sleep about six years ago. Author is CR underscore Jones. If you end up liking this story, go ahead and make sure you give a shout out to CR Jones. Find out if they have any more stories uh, and support your local authors. We need to support our local authors. Make sure we have more incredibly enticing stories uh, like these. I don't know if this guy's local. How dare you do this? The local on Reddit. Uh, instructions for the babysitter. I've only been babysitting for about six months now. It was an easy way to make money, and it didn't require me to have any real applicable skills. It was go I was slow going at first, but a couple of months ago, I hit the jackpot after a young couple from the rich part of town asked me to look after their two kids on one Friday night. They paid me 200 freaking dollars to look after their extremely well behaved behaved children for three hours in a house five times the size of mine it was awesome honestly good gig take that one we, we take those yeah the young couple must have also thought that i had done a good job because word spread quickly around the rich neighborhood about the nice young lady who was willing to look over your children so you could go out for a night of drinking and fun and when i say that this neighborhood is one of the richest in our state i'm not exaggerating most of the people living there are young couples who have come from a long line of wealthy families. Sometimes I'll babysit for a few hours and make a couple hundred bucks. Other times the parents want me to stay the night and then they go off. So I get a hotel room. Wait, 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 wait. Other times the parents want me to stay the night. They go off and get a hotel room so they could be away from their kids for a change. That's where I make the big bucks. Hell yeah, man, dude, make it. A couple of days ago, a husband and wife had texted me asking if I could stay the night at their mansion and watch their seven-year-old little girl for them. I happily agreed. If only I knew what I was in for. When the day finally came, I drove my beat-up Jeep Wrangler to the edge of the rich neighborhood and made my way up this private driveway that I had this private driveway that I had never noticed before because the entrance was hidden back amongst the trees that surrounded the entire north side of town. I drove up this steep winding driveway for what seemed like 10 minutes before I finally saw the house come into view. Out of all the houses I babysat at, this was hands down the most gorgeous one I've ever seen. It was a huge Victorian style mansion that was covered in dark brown bricks, making it blend perfectly into the woods surrounding it. I got out of my car, made my way up to the front porch where I knocked on this gigantic wooden door. A few seconds later, a beautiful woman in her mid thirties answered and introduced herself as Mrs. Collins. She called her husband down and shortly after an extremely handsome man, also in his thirties, came walking down the grand stairway, holding an adorable little girl in his arms. The couple seemed very anxious to leave, even though they were both gorgeous people. I could, <laughs> dude, very gorgeous. <laughs> they were both gorgeous people. I could tell that underneath all their beauty, they were both extremely tired and haggard from having to keep up with their seven year old. They were obviously very excited about having an entire night to themselves and couldn't wait to get out there as fast as they could. Before Mr. and Mrs. Collins left, however, Mrs. Collins handed me several pieces of paper and told me that she had written down a couple of instructions for me to follow throughout the night. She stressed to me how important it was to follow her instructions, and I assured her that I'd give them a look. I waved to the pretty young couple as they made their way down the driveway in their expensive Mercedes and then closed the door behind me. I gave the instructions a quick once over before folding the papers and stuffing them in my back pocket. I'll look at them later, I told myself. How stupid I was to do that. Mr. and Mrs. Collins' daughter, Samantha, is a very nice young girl who warmed up to me almost immediately. We had the next few hours playing games, watching TV. After we finished our fifth episode of Teen Titans Go, not the best Teen Titans, but I'll take it. I noticed that it was getting late and I asked Samantha what her bedtime was. She shrugged, not really giving me an answer, which, when, which is when I remembered Mrs. Collins' instructions. I pulled out the folded pieces of paper and scanned them very quickly when I saw the words, Samantha needs to be in bed before 8 p.m. 
I checked the time and found that it was almost 7.45. Well, it looks like it's your bedtime right now. I said to lift Samantha up off the couch so I could get her ready. She brushed her teeth and I tucked her into her California King sized mattress. I don't wish I had one. I told her good night and I was leaving her room when she said something that stopped me in my tracks. Don't forget to lock my door before you leave, she said. I stopped walking and turned back toward her confused. What do you mean don't forget to lock your door? Why would I need to lock your door? What if you have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night? She looked at me innocently, shrugged her shoulders, and said, I don't know, but Mommy always locks my door before I go to sleep. She says she does it to protect her, me and herself. I don't remember what happens after I fall asleep, but Mommy says that I always try to leave my room at night, which is a bad thing. I looked at her dumbfounded. I didn't know what to say. Mommy told me that she would leave instructions for you to follow, and locking my door is one of them, she said. Okay, Samantha, I'll lock your door. Good, good night, sweetheart. She gave me a big old smile and rolled over in bed. I closed her door and noticed there was a latch drilled into the door frame that would allow someone to lock it from the outside. I closed the latch and then walked back downstairs so I could read the rest of Mrs. Collins' instructions. When I had first seen the piece of paper, I was under the impression that they were just instructions that told me what shows Samantha is not allowed to watch or how to operate the surround sound. After I started reading them, though, I realized that I was wrong. I was completely and utterly wrong. All right. Hello, a Hello Annie. I'm so glad you agreed to stay the night and babysit Samantha for us. She is such an angel, and I'm sure that the both of you will get along very well. I know that our house might seem old and scary, but don't worry because nothing bad will happen to you as long as you follow some simple instructions. Firstly, Samantha needs to be in, in bed in her room with the door locked before 8 p.m. Do not open up her bedroom door after 8 p.m. I repeat, do not open up Samantha's bedroom door after 8 p.m. She will try to con- Whoa. She will try to convince you to open the door in many different ways. What? She will cry, scream, and threaten you until you give in. But do not listen to her. She can't hurt you as long as the door is closed. What the fuck? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, I got goosebumps on that one. Uh, she can't. All right. She can't hurt you. Okay. <sighs> Between eight thirty and nine thirty p.m., make sure you remain in the living room. With the lights turned on. Around this time of night, you may hear scratching and growling coming from Samantha's room or from other parts of the house. These noises are nothing to worry about as long as you stay in the living room. Watch some TV to pass the time. We have a lot of movies to choose from. <laughs> after 9 th after 9.30, do not venture into any dark areas of the house. I would recommend that you turn on as many lights as you can before 9.30 so you, that you don't accidentally trap yourself. What? Trap? You might begin to see you might begin to see things hiding in the dark areas of the house from time to time. And sometimes they will even try to talk to you. I I'm done. <laughs> At this point, I'm leaving. Oh. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> just ignore them they'll have, and they'll eventually ignore you as well you might also happen to see a pair of yellow cat eyes looking at you through the darkness every once in a while do not stare at them for more than 30 seconds Whoa. that is too specific like <laughs> why 30 seconds who found that information out right ah uh, man tw <laughs> 29 seconds you were clear I will never right. go to this house ever. I'll I'll go there. I'll see. I feel like I can follow the rules. Let's see. Let's see what the rules are. 
no, no. <laughs> like, because I'm staring longer than I'm dead. Because I'm staring longer than thirty seconds. I'm like, what the? What is good? Princess is running out what? the door, and she says she's leaving. She's never coming back. <laughs> she's out. <of> Tracomi <laughs> is like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Me and you just stand there holding the bag. Be like, I think we can follow these guys. Guys? <laughs> yes. guys. We're good. Uh, hello? <laughs> All right. <sighs> at, a, at around 10 p.m., it might begin to sound like there are several people walking around in the basement. Dude, is there any part of this house that I can, like, you know, not worry about? No, you gotta, other than the living room? You got to stay in the living room. You got to stay in I the I living room. Pee? You pee. <laughs> You pee in the living room. <laughs> uh, walking around in the basement downstairs. Do not worry, because as long as you stay out of the basement, they cannot get you. I know it sounds unlikely, but around this time, you will begin to feel an overwhelming urge to walk down into the basement. If this happens, go into the kitchen and drink a cold glass of milk. Again! <laughs> who found me? <laughs> to what? Trial and error. Did they find this out? When you start to feel the urge to go join the demons in the basement, just don't get a glass of milk. It goes right away. It goes away <laughs> like so quick. This, this, <laughs> this. Oh my god. This usually helps. The urge will most likely pass after about ten minutes. But if the urge is still there after ten minutes, and you don't think that you will be able to stop yourself from walking into the basement. Then call either me or Mr. Collins, and we'll tell you what to do. Uh huh. There's uh, there's backup instructions. Yeah, right. <laughs> like you didn't didn't include all of it. Okay. Okay. Right. And it's a breakdown of time. Like when ten thirty comes around. Uh huh. You will begin to hear something running back and forth in the hallway upstairs. So downstairs to upstairs. Now ten thirty, we're we're upstairs. Okay. Right, so at, at 10 o'clock, I can't go downstairs. 10.30, I can't go upstairs. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm just... Uh, put headphones on and pretend nothing exists. What the fuck? Read this next line. Come on, please. <laughs> oh, my God. Stay on the first floor of the house during this time. Quit getting ahead of us. I'm sorry, but... <laughs> Don't worry about Samantha as long as you locked her door locked her door beforehand he won't be able to get her what the fuck does that mean <laughs> so wait she can hurt me somebody's ch uh oh e. E. sorry about that I gotta make sure that gets turned off okay oh uh, so something she can get me something's out to get her the basement's out to get me. The things in the dark are out to get me. There's a cat that likes to stare at me, but I can't look at it because it'll get me. Don't look at the cat. <laughs> oh my god, it gets worse. <sighs> Quit getting ahead of us! I'm sorry! <laughs> it gets worse. <laughs> Alright, if you start to hear him making his way down the stairs then lock yourself in the first floor bathroom what the with fuck? Hello, I guess that takes care of my bathroom problem what the fuck he will knock on the bathroom door repeatedly repeatedly and will try impersonating someone close to you like your mom or dad in order to trick you into opening the bathroom door for him he is really good at it <laughs> oh, no. no matter what he says to you and no matter what he sounds like do not open the door he should go away after five minutes check under the door to make sure that he's no longer there before you open it he sidestepped the door this time i feel like I, I feel like this needs to go back and like it is also in line with our original one the 11 rules for dipshits who bought a haunted house <laughs> like this these kind of go like hand in hand almost like are we sure the man's really there? All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, this next part is very important. You will be sleeping in our guest room upstairs for the night. Fuck that. You told me, you told me not to go on the second floor. Uh. 
Before you go to bed, make sure that you leave a plate outside your bedroom door with a piece of raw steak on it. You can find the raw steak in our refrigerator. And leave a glass of milk next to the plate as well. Oh, here you go, like horror claws. Like, what the fuck? On a piece of paper, write the words Parkant Mihi in red ink and leave it on. Uh, again, how do you get to this point where you know what you're writing on a piece of paper in what color ink and whatever you're feeding likes? I want to know the trial and error and who screwed up. At some point during the night, you might wake up and notice that there is something standing in the corner of your room. Okay. Just just for a quick little reference here. Parkant mihi is Latin, and it, it translates to spare me, believe me, or, or uh, something will prosper me. But basically, spare me. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sp park at me, he means spare me. Yeah, horrifying. Okay. At some oh, point during the night, okay. you might no wake up and notice that there's there's something standing in the corner of the room. Please refrain from looking at the figure as <laughs> you can. I recommend that you that wearing your ear wearing earbuds so that you hear it muttering to itself at what point do you just move is it the house is it y'all is it the well i mean the daughter's kind of possessed too maybe it's the daughter maybe <sighs> maybe the daughter is like some sort of like just horrible something that just brings us all about all right uh we're almost there <laughs> yeah and that and that's about it there are a few <laughs> other things what was that all <laughs> There's, there's also a few other general rules that you should follow throughout the night just to make sure that nothing bad happens. Rule number one. If the house phone rings at any point during the night, don't answer it, no matter how long or how loud it, it might ring. Mr. Collins and I miss, yeah, Mr. Collins and I will call your cell phone if we need to talk with you. Then why do you have a house phone? Wait, why didn't you just pull it out of the wall and get rid of it? <laughs> Rule number two, if you feel something tap on your shoulder at any point during the night, don't turn around and wait at least 30 seconds before. Again, the specific, the specificity of how long I have to do. I want to know how many babysitters you've gone through that screwed one of these rules up that you got the exact time. Bro, rule three's got me freaking out. <laughs> like, it's got me rule fucked up. What? If, if, freaking who am I? Uh, Gizmo? Right? Rule three. Don't eat meat after eight o'clock. They might see it as a threat and will mostly, uh, most likely attack you. What the fuck is in there? Thanks again, Annie. If you have any trouble or questions, feel free to call me or my husband at any point during the night. If you do call us and a man with a very deep voice answers the phone, hang up immediately and try calling us again. Hello, Mrs. Collins? How you doing? Who is it? How you doing, honey? <laughs> How you doing, honey? <laughs> Click. <laughs> Click. P.S. Throughout the night, you might hear a dog whimpering from somewhere off inside the house. We do not have a dog. We don't go looking for it. I hadn't, I hadn't realized what I got myself into. It's currently 8.31 as I'm writing this. And the growling noise has just started. It sounds like they're coming from every room in the fucking house. I thought that Samantha's screams from a couple minutes ago were going to be the worst part. But now I can hear muffled growls from upstairs, and I can assure you, this is worse. This is so much worse. Oh my goodness! I can't stand an stand an animal suffering. Oh, I know, right? Like you'd have to. I just have to go check on it. So from eight thirty to nine thirty, that's what she's getting to now. Uh, stay in the living room with the lights on. Scratching, growling come from all over the house. Nothing to worry about staying in the living room. Watch some TV while in the background it's... <laughs> right. 
You didn't tell me to bring my earbuds. Right, right. <laughs> was this was not in the opening packet for orientation? Right. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Not bad. I mean, like in the beginning, CR Jones, CR underscore Jones. You had me. It was good. But wow, those uh, those instructions leave a lot to the imagination. I think that's where the last story failed a little bit. Is like this one just leaves so much to the imagination. It doesn't try to over explain everything.